several reports of delegators seeing unknown pool instead of the name of the pool that they delegated to. Should they be concerned? And if not, what could be going on behind the scenes to cause this bug in Uroi? It's time for the weekly recap. Welcome back to Woodland Pools, your place for the latest Cardano news, tutorials, and the information you need to grow your investment with confidence. Today it's time for a special weekly recap. There wasn't a lot of news going on in the broader market, but we did hear about a lot of delegators that were seeing unknown pool when they went to look at their dashboard in Yeroi. So we thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to dig in a little bit more into the metadata associated with the stake pool, the metadata hash, how this is used to prevent fraud, but how it can also show sometimes some false positives. So let's do a quick stake pool update and jump right in. As always, we want to start off by saying a huge thank you and welcome to this week's newest delegators. We truly appreciate your support and we're really excited to go on this journey with you. Let's keep growing together. So a lot of people were surprised this week when they went to their Yeroi wallet, they may have typed in a pool like Aspen, delegated to a pool like Aspen, everything went through fine, but when they went to their dashboard, they saw that they're delegated to an unknown pool. So that's kind of concerning, right? So why would this happen? And what's a valid case for this to happen? And what's a potential false positive? To understand this, the first thing we need to look at is the Smash server. So let's get some information on what the Smash server is from Charles Hoskinson himself. There's a video that Charles put out in about September of last year, and he was talking about the intention of the Smash server and how it can be used moving forward. Let's take a look. Uh, Smash is another concept that's been under development very heavily, and Smash is just our view of how uh, metadata should be handled for stake pools. But so right there, he says it very straightforward. The notion of Smash is a server that will handle metadata for stake pools. He goes into some more detail here in terms of how Smash can evolve and how it can be used in the future. But at its core, it's just the linking of metadata of a stake pool and having it be distributed out from one of these Smash servers. After this video was published in September of last year, there was a blog put out by the IO team talking about Smash, introducing a new way of managing stake pool metadata. So let's take a look. The idea of Smash is a server that supports operators and ADA owners by validating the information about stake pools and storing it as metadata. The goal of this metadata is to keep track of stake pool information and simplify the choice of a pool for delegators. Additionally, the idea is to ensure that the information about each stake pool is relevant and valid, and, wherever possible, that the influence of bad actors such as potential attackers, spoof pools, and trolls in the system is minimized. So, okay, so this makes sense. The intent is let's store some metadata and we'll use that in some way to make sure that we can give people relevant information about pools when they're selecting those pools, but also through the Smash server, we can have this information stored and distributed to make sure that people aren't changing things about their metadata. But we keep using this term metadata, and some of you are probably wondering, what is metadata? Or those of you that are familiar with metadata are wondering, okay, but what are the different metadata properties that are being tracked for these different stake pools? So let's take a look. If you were to come over to woodlandpools.net and you were to visit the specific endpoint, aspenmetadata.json, you would actually see our stake pool's metadata file. So you see here that the metadata for the stake pool, and this is for every stake pool, they all have all these same properties. This is part of the registration process when you're registering your stake pool. You'll see that we have our name, the ticker that you see when you're doing a search, a description of the pool, our homepage, the nonce, and we can also see a URL for where the extended metadata is hosted. So let's take a look at what extended metadata looks like. If we come to that URL, we can see here that now we have some options for our stake pools icon, some social media things for Twitter, Telegram, and YouTube, some things about the operators and about the pool itself, and for the pool ID. Now, the extended metadata information is totally optional, and it's just used to be able to enhance the presence of the stake pool on consuming sites like Ada Pools or Pool Tool. But the important piece that works with the Smash server is the first element that we looked at here, just the general metadata file. So now, going back to the article we were looking at, they said that the Smash server, the intention is to be able to minimize the influence of bad actors, such as potential attackers, spoof pools, and trolls. But how would we do that? And if we think about it, a simple way to do that is that since the metadata is a requisite part of a pool's registration, what you could do is you could say, okay, well, I want to make sure that the metadata that you used when you registered is the same metadata that you have published at any given time. 
Because keep in mind that even though we are hosting this metadata here on our website, we could just as well come in and change any of this information and it could not match what we had used when we had published our pool initially. So if you think about it, this is how you could easily have things like spoof pools where you can just go in and change your name or change your ticker and pretend to be another pool. So how do you prevent that? That's where we start looking at the question of the metadata hash. So what is a metadata hash? To understand that, we need to know what a hash is. For a nice simple explanation of what a hash is, we can come to Investopedia, and here we go, what is a hash? A hash is a mathematical function that converts an input of arbitrary length into an encrypted output of a fixed length. So you can take a string of characters, no matter how long it is, and you'll end up with an output that's always the same length every time. But the most important part is that a hash algorithm like this is deterministic. And so what it means is that if you use the same algorithm and the same input, you'll always get the same output every time. So this is where the important feature is that instead of having to go through our file here and make sure letter by letter that every single character that was entered is the same as the characters that were entered when the pool was registered, instead you can compare one hash to the other and know if it's changed because again if you were to take the same set of characters and the same algorithm it should result in an identical hash every time. So as they say here, if you use such a function on the same data, its hash will be identical. So you can validate the data is the same or unaltered if you already know its hash ahead of time. So that's where our metadata hash comes in. When you first register your pool, you provide an endpoint for your metadata.json. You'll get a metadata hash that's created and is stored on the blockchain as part of the registration of the pool. And at any given time, the Smash server should be able to validate that the metadata hash that is currently being generated by your JSON file matches the metadata hash that was used when you published your pool. And this is great, right? Because that way, if somebody were to have published some metadata and then the hash was generated, and later they were to change some information, like they were to pretend to be a different pool, those would not match up and you would get an error. In this kind of situation, you would want something like unknown pool or some kind of a flag to appear because it can let potential delegators know, hey, the hash that this person is using for this pool isn't the same one that was generated when they registered with the blockchain initially, so something might be wrong here. However, it turns out that there is a well-known issue with Uroi that is affecting lots of stake pool operators, that your stake pool can show as unknown for several days or longer in delegator dashboards after metadata has been updated in a valid manner. So here's the thing, is that for security reasons, you wanna compare the registered metadata hash with the one that's live at any given time and make sure that they match up, right? But what happens now if you need to update your metadata for some reason? It's a very simple process. In the command line tools that all of us stake pool operators have, you go in, you say, I need to update my pool's information. You fill in those fields once again. You register with the network. Everything is recorded. A new JSON file is generated. Therefore, a new hash is generated. And those, as long as you don't change them any further, will always match up. So that should be fine, right? At any given time, as long as your metadata was done in a valid manner, right, then the hash that you have should always match the one that was registered. However, as you can probably see where we're going with this issue and the problem that we saw with the Aspen pool, sometimes false positives can happen. And how does that happen? Well, it turns out that with the way the Smash server propagates the information and how different wallets and things cache that information or how they store it for fast access, if for some reason a wallet like Uroi is storing the metadata hash from a previous set of information and there's now on the blockchain for that pool a different metadata hash, those will not match up and then you'll get this same error. So this can be kind of confusing for a delegator because you say, well, how do I know the difference between a pool that has maybe maliciously changed some information from the time when they first registered the pool to a time after? How do I know the difference between that and when a pool has just validly updated their metadata, but it just has not propagated out to all the different wallets and things? Well, the great thing for all of us in the Cardano community is that the Cardano ecosystem is filled with lots of very positive and helpful people. And there is an awesome tool that was put together by the operators of the ABC stake pool called pool.vet. Any of you can come and check this out. You can come to pool.vet, type in any stake pool, ours or any other. Let's type in Aspen and see here. We can do a check on Aspen. And now while this is pulling up, let's remember, we're getting this unknown pool in real time here in Uroi. 
But if we come to pool.vet, we can see here lots of great information. We can see the pool's ID. We can see the variable margin or variable fee that's registered with the network. We can see the actual amount in the pledge wallet. And we can see that it is greater than or equal to the amount that the pool has pledged to keep as a pledge for the pool. Then we see the metadata. The metadata was processed here. Here's the same information that we saw directly on the Woodland Pool site now being pulled up again. The metadata hash was generated. And most importantly, we see that we have a green pass here that the metadata hash that was generated as a check matches the one that was registered with the network. So we know that everything is good. Our change to the Aspen stake pool was a trivial one. We just changed our name from Aspen pool to Aspen pool by Woodland pools. And the reason why we did this was that we knew that there were people that would come to our channel, see Woodland pools, and when they were looking to delegate, would type in something like Woodland. And before it wouldn't have pulled up. So we said, let's make this easier on people and let's change the name of the pool to Aspen pool by Woodland pools. So if they were to search for either Woodland or Aspen, it would still pull up. As you can see here, when we were looking at pool.vet, our new name is Aspen pool by Woodland pools. That's what drove us to do this metadata change. The hash does match what is registered. So we're good to go there. So any delegators to the Aspen pool, you can rest assured everything is green. We're good to go. But moving forward, this pool.vet is a great site that you can use and you can pass along to your friends in the Cardano community that are also delegating their ADA. And you can now give them a very simple way that when they say, hey, my pool says unknown pool. Is this a bad thing or is it just your Roy lagging behind? You can say, hey, come to pool.vet, check the pool, see if everything passes green. If it does, it just means that your Roy is out of date. If it doesn't, there might be a problem. You might want to find another stake pool to delegate to. Hopefully that clears that up. We know it was probably pretty scary to see your delegation to Aspen be showing as unknown. So we thought this could be a good opportunity to dig a little bit deeper and maybe all of us can learn a little bit more about some of the other properties of the stake pools that we all delegate to. If you like the way that we dig into these technical topics, you might enjoy our video where we demystify another really common confusion on crypto keys, wallets, and addresses. If you've already seen that one, check out another one of our recent videos. And if nothing else, we'll see you next week.